everybody, I'm Joey, and uh, I'm going to be talking to you about the two big benefits of asynchronous and synchronous teaching and learning. Um, so let's get started. The first thing I want to do is uh, define synchronous instruction and define asynchronous instruction. So synchronous instruction takes place when the participants are engaging with the course content in the same place at the same time. So um, for, for many teachers, we got accustomed to um, being in the classroom with our students at the same time in the same place uh, every every week or ever however many days or what have you. So that's uh, synchronous instruction. Asynchronous instruction takes place when the participants are engaging with the course content at different times and potentially from different places. So for example, what that might look like is um, you as the instructor, uh, you go and put um, some videos or some texts or articles on e-class and you let the students know, go read that or view that on your own time. So that is asynchronous instruction. So now we're gonna go over the two big benefits of asynchronous instruction. And the first big benefit that I wanna talk about is that it is extremely flexible. Asynchronous instruction is very flexible. Um, it allows for independent work to be done it allows students to uh, work around their own schedules. So if a student has a job or other commitments, uh, they're able to access the course content when it doesn't conflict with um, whatever uh, work or other outside things that they have. It also allows uh, students to um, dictate the pace at which they engage with the course content. So uh, students can choose to move through uh, course content uh, more quickly or uh, more slowly uh, as they need to or as they want to. And it allows for flexibility uh, in the space. So um, students don't need to be in that physical classroom, in that space. They can work remotely. Um, they can do the work from home or from a cafe or, or wherever, I guess, currently uh, just from home. Um, and this also cuts down on things like a commute. So those are the two big benefits of asynchronous instruction. It is extremely flexible and, and it'll, and, um, or pardon me, that's the, the first big uh, uh, benefit of asynchronous instruction. Now let's get into uh, the second big benefit of asynchronous instruction. And that is that it allows time for reflection. And what I mean by that is that students can go and review the material multiple times. So a student can go and read an article or view a video one, two, three, however many times they need to, to become comfortable with that material. And it also allows uh, time for students to reflect on response. So for example, if students are engaging in a um, synchronous conversation, some students might feel added pressure to um, contribute to the conversation in the moment. So what asynchronous allows those students is uh, it allows for uh, the ability to reflect on an answer and it allows students to maybe pull additional resources uh, to supplement the argument that they wanna make, let's say if they are posting to a conversation in an e-class forum. So those are the two big uh, benefits of asynchronous instruction. We have uh, the, the flexibility and the, um, the allowance to reflect on the content. So now we're going to move into the two big benefits of synchronous instruction. Uh, the first one is that it is immediate. So this allows for prompt feedback, and that's prompt feedback from you as the instructor and also from students. If there's group work, the students are able to communicate um, immediately in the moment. And as an instructor, this allows uh, for you to do a little bit of formative assessment. You can check for understanding in the moment and adapt on the fly. So let's say your students are working in groups, you can travel uh, around the space, or if it's a virtual space like um, Zoom, you can go into the breakout rooms and kind of get a feel for where the students are in terms of how they're grasping the content. So then you can decide, oh, here is a gap in, in uh, the knowledge transfer. I'm going to um, address that. I'm going to um, approach this material again, maybe in a different way. Or you might recognize that everyone is on the same page, things are going smoothly, and you can move on to the next piece uh, in, in, uh, in your content. Um, the 
second big uh, benefit that I want to talk about is that in a synchronous setting, we're able to build a better sense of community. So obviously, I think it goes without saying that when we're all in the same space and we can all see each other, that it's easier to build those bonds and build those relationships that we know are important um, to teaching and also to um, uh, between peers and, and, and making those friendships. And um, uh, it's, it helps with culture building in your, in your class. It also allows for synchronous um, instruction also allows for uh, clarity in conversation. So when you can see people and you can see their expressions and you can hear the cadence in their voice, it allows for more effective communication and less things are, are lost. Um, so for example, you can see me, you can see that if I'm happy or if I'm pleased with something or if I'm terrified because I'm, I'm being recorded right now, um, you can see those things. Uh, something like sarcasm, which in a synchronous setting even can be lost on some folks. Um, you can imagine that in an asynchronous setting, unless you're explicitly writing sarcasm, that you know there's a really good chance that that might be lost on someone. So now um, I want to show you folks some really quick, easy to use tools for synchronous instruction that are on your phone or tablet. And I'm just going to share share that with you. So I'm going to go to share screen, and it's going to give me some options. And I, I'm going to select AirPlay here, and I'm just going to go into Notes. I'm going to go into Landscape here, and this is something you can do in your synchronous um, sessions. I'm going to go to the Draw function and use this tool however you would like to use it. But you can do something as simple as this: four plus four equals Nobody knows. Um, that's just something simple, but uh, obviously it's a, it's a very simplistic way of using it, but there, it's just uh, an, an idea for you folks. So I'm gonna pop out of notes. Let's go to camera. And now I can show folks what, uh, what's in my space and I can interact with objects. And so for example, maybe we go over to this amazing uh, Chinese money plant here and uh, we can go over the parts of the plant. Uh, this uh, here is uh, known as the leaf. And um, this uh, portion of the plant here, uh, we like to call the broken chopstick. So these are things that you can do um, in your synchronous sessions. Um, I know that in, um, I think Anita is in the, in the room, just did an amazing profile on Callum Stumpf, who is a, instructor with mechanical engineering. And what he's doing is he is live streaming all of his labs and they have a little phone uh, on a gimbal and they're able to go in close and look at all the different uh, mechanisms that they're working on. Um, so yeah, these are things that you can start to incorporate uh, into your synchronous teaching time. You might be wondering, wow, Joey, synchronous and asynchronous, Oh, they both sound amazing, and they are. Which one should you choose? Well, the research tells us that they are best used in combination with each other, blended together. So here at the CTL, we, um, we also highly recommend that you don't use your synchronous time to lecture your students. Rather, use that time to expand on what was already covered during the asynchronous input. So, Things that are, are, are very effective and the research shows is that having a short quiz at the beginning of your synchronous session based on the content uh, that was uh, gone, uh, that, that you went over in the asynchronous um, uh, sessions uh, is, is very effective. You could also record your classes, um, be aware of any FOIP issues though, and you can record just the audio. Um, students can go and listen to it like a podcast. Um, but rather than lecturing in your synchronous time, use that time for active learning tasks that get the students engaged with the material. So what that might look like is maybe have the students go over a case study or host a, a debate. Um, you can host a Q and A. Um, you can also uh, use some facilitated discussion formats like snowballing or jigsawing or have a guest speaker come in and then you can uh, asynchronously have the students prepare questions 
in advance. So the two big benefits of asynchronous instruction is that it's flexible and that it allows for reflection. The two big benefits of synchronous instruction uh, is it's that it's immediate and it builds this sense of community. And we can't stress this enough, avoid using uh, lecture-based teaching in your synchronous instruction and try to use active learning techniques.